beautiful good evening, a wonderful good evening to you. Wherever you are on planet Earth, we have come to praise the Lord on a beautiful Sunday evening in Tobago. The beaches are lovely. The mountains are beautiful. Hey, what can I say? Some people call it the capital of paradise. But until we get to heaven, we won't know what paradise is all about. But in the meantime, we're going to enjoy what the Lord has provided for us. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer as we proceed our worship tonight with a word to God. Almighty God, we thank you for your blessing. And we thank you for life. Wow, what a beautiful God you have been to us. And as we enter this time of praise and worship, may your Holy Spirit attend us and be with the entire proceedings tonight is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. Let's sing it together. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. May my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me single all that before thy throne I spend when I kneel in prayer and with thee my God I commune as friend with friend draw me never never blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me to be like Jesus 100 full 100 and it's only he could teach us all I would be their savior holy thine teach me how teach me how I would do thy will oh lord not mine help me help me now worldly pleasure wealth or fame without thee without thee I will leave them all for thy dear name this my wealth shall be sing holy thine holy thine holy thine this is my vow holy thine Just now, as I cast the transient joys behind, just come down there, come down there. In thy presence, all in all, I find this my comfort here. Oh, holy thine, holy thine, holy 
thine, this is my vow. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, O oh Lord, just now. We are looking to a land that is much better than this. Oh, you can't compare this to the land we're looking for. And by faith, we can see it. Hey, let's sing that song. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith, we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Now we shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest. Sing in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. To a bountiful Father above. We will offer a tribute of praise For the glorious gift of His love And the blessings that hallow our days In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. This earth is a strange place, but we have to work and persevere and talk to God and work to get to that beautiful shore. Oh, there'll be joy when all of that is over. Yeah, sing that. Oh, there'll be joy when the work is done. Joy when the reapers gather home. Bring in the sheaves that set of sun to the new Jerusalem. Oh, joy, joy, there'll be joy by and by. Joy, joy, where the joy never die. Joy, joy, for the day draw at night when the workers gather home. How sweet are the sounds that we hope to sing. Grateful the thanks our hearts shall bring. Hey, praising forever Christ our King in the new Jerusalem. Oh joy, joy, there'll be joy by and by. Joy, joy, where the joy never die. Joy, joy for the day draw at night when the workers gather home. Pure are the joys that await us there. Many the golden mansions fair. Now Jesus himself doth them prepare in the new Jerusalem. Joy, joy. There'll be joy by and by, joy, joy, where the joy never die. Joy, joy, for the day, joy at night, when the workers gather home. Sing it again now, joy, 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 there'll be joy by and by. Joy, 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 where the joy never die. Sing joy, joy, for the day, joy. When the workers gather home. Let us pray. Almighty God, once again, 
We want to thank you for this opportunity that we can commune with you. We want to thank you for this opportunity that we can come and just spend this time aside from a busy schedule, just, you know, giving you praise, honor, and just listening to your word. So, Lord, at this time, we want to open our hearts, open our minds to receive a word from you. Lord, and as we receive it, help, oh, Lord, that we would be closer drawn to you, that we would be in this unity or this unison with you, dear God, that we would just feel your Holy Spirit with us. Continue to be with us, dear God. Continue to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Then you arose in 
Christian friends, I know that God has been good to you. The mere fact that you have tuned in this evening is indicative of the fact that God has been good and you are grateful for his goodness. So even now, as we come to God's word, I wish to speak to you this evening on the topic, the gospel according to the seed. Notice I said, speak and not preach. But if I begin to preach, then I beg your indulgence from now. Let us pray wherever you are as we go to God and we go to his word. Dear Father, we thank you so much for your goodness towards us. We give you glory and we give you praise for every good and perfect gift comes from above. Bless every listener. Bless every viewer this evening. Whatever their need, we know that you are the answer. And so we bring them to you along with their need. And we trust to God. And we know that you will meet the specificity of every need. So touch, bless and enlarge boundaries wherever you have to this evening, dear Lord. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, thy st my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen. The scene I wish for you to picture with me this evening should be easy for you. If you have an imaginative mind, or you live in the Caribbean, or have visited the Caribbean, Go with me to the Sea of Galilee. Feel the ocean breeze. See the blue sea. <laughs> there by the Sea of Galilee, a crowd is gathered to see and hear Jesus. Some came because they were sick and in need of healing. Some came to bring their loved ones who were sick and in need of healing. Some came out of sheer curiosity. Some came to hear the master teacher. Some came to eat the bread and fish. The crowd grew thicker and thicker until there was no more room for Jesus to stand. This is where we pick up the story from Mark's perspective in Mark 4 verse 1. Go with me there. Mark 4 verse 1 records, and he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. The book Christ Object Lesson records, beside the sea lay the beautiful plain of Gennesaret. Beyond rose the hills, and upon the hillside and plain both sowers and reapers were busy, the one casting seed and the other harvesting the early grain. Looking upon the seed, Christ said, reading from verse 3, Behold, there went out a sower to sow. Verse 4, And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fault of the air came and devoured it up. Verse 5, And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no roots, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that had ears to hear, let him hear. Well, let's skip a few verses as we... Go to verse 14, where Jesus explains the parable to his disciples. The sower soweth the word. Verse 15, 
And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown in, on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Verse 19, And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the loss of other things, entering in, choke the word, it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. The book Christ's Object Lesson also tells us that because of its simplicity, the parable of the sower has not been valued as it should be. From the natural seed cast into the soil, Christ declares, or desires rather, to lead our minds to the gospel seed. Note the gospel seed, hence the topic, the gospel according to the seed, the sowing of which results in bringing man back to his loyalty to God. He who gave the parable of the tiny seed is the sovereign of heaven, and the same laws that govern earthly seed sowing govern the sowing of the seeds of truth. The approach to this parable this evening will be somewhat unconventional, but I pray that you will be blessed as we explore this topic together. It is said that few things on earth are as miraculous and vital as seeds. Like tiny time capsules, they contain the songs, sustenance, memories, and medicines of entire cultures. They feed us, clothe us, and provide the raw materials for our everyday lives. In a very real sense, seeds are life itself. A seed is small yet valuable. Indeed, valuable things come in small packages. Understanding this principle, I believe that Noah preserved seed in the ark at the time of the flood. I also read somewhere that soon after the flood, trees and plants seemed to spring out of the rocks. In God's providence, seeds were scattered and driven into crevices of the rocks, and they securely hid for the future use of man. You see, my friends, a seed has something within itself to generate life. Seeds are embedded in the ground so that after a natural disaster, we would see grass, plants, flowers, and trees begin to sprout from the earth. Isn't God good? In fact, isn't he great to do something like that? The earth itself has seed. Even if you excavate a place and leave it after some time, something will grow there. That's because of God himself. He pronounced from the beginning in Genesis 1.11, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so, and it remains so to this day. For the seed to grow into a plant, the seed must first die. Take root, sprout, mature, bring forth leaves, and bear fruit of its kind. But this growth is not as a result of the sower. No, 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 my friends. It is a miracle from God, similar to the birth of a child. The birth of a child is not as a result of the man and the woman. It is a miracle from God himself, the life giver. An old professor of biology used to hold a little brown seed in his hand and say, I know exactly the proportions and composition of this seed. It has nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon. I can make a seed that will look exactly like this. But if I plant my seed, it will come to note. It's because its elements will be simply absorbed in the soil. If I plant the seed God made, however, it will become a plant because it contains the mysterious principle which we call the life principle. My friends, permit me to elaborate this evening on the life principle found in the seed from the life giver himself. The seed metaphorically illustrates spiritual principles at all points of the growth process. Point number one, the seed must first die. Though one, it becomes many through death. In other words, the seed is multiplied by casting it away. 
Jesus clearly links the death of a seed and the roots and sprouts that follow with the spiritual death of the believer. In John 12, 24, we read, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The KJV says, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So it is with those of us, Christians, people who are faithful in distributing God's gifts by imparting their increase, their blessings. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yet, but the problem with some of us, my friends, is that we want the blessing of the new birth experience without first experiencing death. Without first dying to self. That's why John said, he, Jesus, must increase, but I, John, must decrease in John 3.30. All things must pass away before we can become new. I hope you got that this evening. Some of us want to hold on to certain old things while claiming to be new creatures. But if we want to be transformed like the seed, we must first die to self. I've come by here to tell somebody this evening that all things must die in you if you are to experience the joy of being a new creation. The songwriter says that if I could have sung, I would have sung with him. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. The things I used to eat, I eat them no more. The songs I used to sing, I sing them no more. Why? The thoughts I used to harbor, I think them no more. The hatred I used to have, I have it no more. The unforgiving spirit I used to carry around, I leave it behind. Why? It's a great change since I was born again. Yes, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Point number two, once the seed dies, the next step is that the seed's coat is ruptured. Radical emerges to form a primary root. From this root, the seed, the seed starts absorbing underground water. Turn with me to a lovely passage of scripture I found in Isaiah 27, verse 6. And if you have your Bible or you see it on the screen, read it with me. It says, He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. What a wonderful text. Only after the seed has died can it take root. Somebody didn't hear me this evening. Only after the seed has died can it take root. Ask yourself, what do I have to die to this evening? Proverbs 12, 3 says that the root of the righteous shall not be moved. The righteous receive strength for every trial because their root is firm. Their trust in God is without question. Do I hear somebody say amen this evening? Ephesians 3, 17 says that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in love, and because there now is root, that he may be able, verse 18, to comprehend what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that he may be filled with all the fullness of God. I ask you this, que this question this evening, my friends. Are you well rooted? in God so that when the sun comes up you are not scorched because you have no roots and you wither away in other words when the pressure comes, when, when the trials come, when the testing comes, are you easily dismayed? Are you easily uprooted? Or does your faith come into question? Or are you steadfast in faith no matter what? When you hear a new doctrine that sounds good, are you easily persuaded? Or are you so grounded, so rooted that you are not tossed about with every wind of doctrine? Job 14, 8 and 9 tells us, Though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stuff thereof die in the ground, verse 9, Verse 9, yet, though, yet through the scent of the water, just the scent, it will bud. 
and bring forth bows like a plant. Jesus said of himself, I am the living water. Jesus said of himself, I am the water of life. In John 4, 14, Jesus declares, but whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. I submit to you this evening, my friends, that without this living water, we cannot grow. The only way we can be so rooted is by spending time in God's word, by being watered by his truth. His word has power to transform. His word is life. The Holy Spirit will come to the aid of anyone who reads God's word with a desire to be transformed. Do I hear somebody say amen and amen? Point number three. Once the seed dies and takes root, the next step is that the shoot starts growing upwards. Isaiah 61, 10 and 11 says, For I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he had clothed me with the garments of salvation. He had covered me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decked himself with ornaments and as a bride adorned herself with her jewels. Verse 11. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness. What will, it, what will the Lord God cause? Righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. You see, the root, the root, the root, the root, we cannot see the root. But we can see the shoot. Hallelujah. And we know when we see the shoot that something is happening. God wants to cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Let's talk about righteousness. Romans 3.22 tells us the righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, for there is no difference. The righteousness of God belongs to us if we put our trust in him. Far too long, some of us have been putting our trust in man. Far too long, some of us have been putting our trust in our material possession. Far too long, some of us have been putting our trust in our jobs. Far too long, some of us have been putting our trust in material things. But this evening, I've come by here to tell somebody to put your trust in God. For only when you put your trust in God are you assured. Are you assured of help? Are you assured of strength? Are you assured of life? Because he is your refuge and he is your strength. Far too long some of us have been professing to be Christians rather than living Christian lives. Some of us have been bad seed in good clothing and causing the entire church to get a bad name. But God wants us to, to demonstrate good seed characteristics, whether we're in church clothes or not. And that's why he offers his righteousness to, to us as a gift that we can sprout righteousness before all the nations. You see, God wants a righteous people to demonstrate to the world that it is possible to live soberly to live righteously, to live godly in this present world. God wants a righteous people to demonstrate to the world the new birth experience. No turning back, no turning back. And then you can sing the cross before me and the world behind me. No turning back. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. God also wants us to, to sprout praise to him, my friends. Psalm 22, 3 tells us that the Lord inhabits the praises of Israel. Although we were actually created by God to praise and worship him, we really have little concept of what it means to praise and worship God. Since the fall of man, we as the human race, the unredeemed human race, we have lost our full capacity to praise God. But we can be restored to our original image by worshiping God on a regular basis. Morning, noon, and night. Let your praises rise. Just as God gives you life every day, every day, therefore, you should be praising the Lord. 
I submit to you today. A key to powerful praise is that it be released through your lips. It should not just be a thought. Expressing praise brings the blessings of praise. Did I hear somebody say amen? As praise goes up in the response of the loving kindness of the Lord, there comes a sense of joy and satisfaction and blessings come down. Point number four. Once the seed dies and takes root, the seed sprouts and grows into a mature plant. Second Peter 3.18 tells us, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. You see, my friends, it would be all for naught if the seed is planted. It just gets roots. It sprouts and it ends there. It must grow, it must mature, it must bring forth fruit. Sadly, many Christians only take root and sprout, but do not mature. They are, they are stuck at the same place they were 2, 5, 10, 15 years ago in their Christian experience. Little or no growth as a Christian is unacceptable. Progress must be seen. It is not only normal, but it is necessary to reach maturity in Christ. Over a period of time, as you continue to respond in obedience to what you learn from the scriptures, you will begin to reflect the characteristics of a growing disciple of Christ in its fullest and truest sense. You see, a growing disciple progresses from a point of mere curiosity about Christ to the point of surety in Christ. A growing disciple is consistent in prayer and the study of God's word. A growing disciple displays a sacrificial love for everyone they meet. A growing disciple displays a fruitful and obedient life to God. A growing disciple is committed to making other disciples. The new birth experience is the result of the seed dying in the soil. Not I, but Christ. Be seen, be known, be heard. The new birth experience is as a result of receiving Christ as a living and enduring water of life and taking root. The new birth experience is the result of the word of God finding roots in our hearts. You see, Christ is the revealer of truth. By him, the incorruptible seed, the word of God, is sown in our hearts. The new birth experience is the result of the Holy Spirit impressing divine truths upon our hearts and we begin to sprout. The new birth experience is as a result of you accepting these divine truths and cooperating with the Holy Spirit. You desire to keep his commandments. Yes, you make your mistakes from time to time, but you don't allow the mistakes to hold you hostage and keep you down. The new birth experience is as a result of you allowing God's will to override your will. You begin to mature in Christ. The new birth experience then manifests itself in fruit. That brings me to my fifth point about, about seeds. Once the seed dies and takes root, the seed sprouts, the seed matures, and then the seed bears fruit. You see, no one wants to plant something that yields nothing. The fruit tells us that the process is complete. I mentioned before that a growing disciple will display a fruitful and obedient life and will be committed to making other disciples. Just as a fruit will produce a seed that can be used to be planted again, a disciple must also bear fruit which can help someone else to grow in Christ. Do I hear somebody say amen? That's why Matthew seven twenty tells us, Wherefore by thy fruits ye shall know them. In the parable, the seed that fell on good ground produced fruit. The result was the same. It produced fruit. The quantity was different. Some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100-fold. Question for your consideration. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? Question two, what kind of fruit are you bearing? When you put a seed on the ground, despite your best 
efforts. It is God who causes it to grow and bring forth fruit. I've come by here to tell somebody this evening, if you want to bear fruit, then you must stay connected to God, the life giver, the creator, the sustainer, the self-existing one. John 15, 4 and 5 tells us, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except ye abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. My friends, without God, we are nothing. With him, all things are possible. Did I hear somebody say amen? I want to tell you a final thing about seed before I close this message today. The fruit, the future crops, the produce, the yield is not only dependent on the type of seed, but also on its environment. You see, the environment can either suppress your growth or stimulate your growth. So the seed may be good, but its yield depends on where it is planted. In the parable, the farmer sowed seeds on different soil. Some fell on the wayside and the fowls came and ate it up. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth and immediately it sprang up but failed to sustain growth because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun came up, what happened? It was scorched and because it had no root, it withered away. Some fell among thorns, but the thorns grew up and choked it and the seed bore no fruit. Those which fell on good ground produced fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Let me bring this home. Based on the parable and by the natural laws of nature, depending on where seed is planted, it may not yield anything. Depending on where it is planted, its yield may be small. Depending on where it is planted, its yield may be in abundance. As in most cases, every rule has an exception. There are some seeds, I am told, which will thrive almost Anyway, no matter what the environment. For example, it is said that while marigold need lots of sunlight to grow, they will thrive in almost every soil. Today, I want you to be a marigold. This is true for people too, you see. There are some people who thrive almost anywhere regardless of the environment. Take Joseph, for example. Amid negativity, jealousy, being thrown into a pit and being sold into slavery at age 17. Amidst defamation, false imprisonment, Joseph was able to succeed amidst his struggle. Joseph proved to be a marigold. He was able to triumph over his trials. He was able to thrive regardless of the Egyptian soil. He was a Hebrew living in, living in Egypt, a Christian planted in non-Christian soil, not by choice, but by force. His environment naturally dictated that he brought forth no food but God. His brothers thought that by putting him in a pit, they could suppress his growth. But God, they thought that by selling him, they could suppress his growth. But God, the prison only served to strengthen his faith in God and stimulate his growth. Did I hear somebody say amen? Years later, his brothers were surprised that day that what they had planned for evil, God had turned it around for not only Joseph's good, but for their good and the good of the land. Potiphar had to turn to the same Joseph for a strategic plan to prepare for the impending famine. The prisoner became governor. Why did I bring that up? You see, I want to cause you to think, what kind of environment are you planted in? Do you find it difficult to thrive where you are? Do you find it difficult to bear fruit in your present environment? Perhaps you were born into a poor family. Perhaps your family history has certain disease pattern. Perhaps you find that you did not attend an elite school. Perhaps you did not even finish high school. Perhaps you had children out of wedlock. Perhaps you wish you were living in a gated community. Perhaps you don't have your dream job. Perhaps your family situation is not the best. Perhaps your health condition is not where you desire it to be. Perhaps you wish you could move to another village, another country, another continent. 
another church. But I've come by here to tell somebody today, as I told my high school graduation class years ago, if you can't be a tree on top of a hill, then be a beautiful shrub in the valley below. If you can't be a sun, then be a star. But by all means, be the best at whatever you are. In other words, bear fruit and thrive wherever you are planted, regardless of the environment, you be that marigold. I've come by here to tell somebody this evening, God wants you to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. Your leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. I've come by here to tell somebody this evening that it is God who brings about growth, who brings about fruit. Let no man, let no woman, let no child, let not even the devil tell you that you can't bear fruit. For it is God, it is God, my friends, who brings forth fruit. Philippians 1, 6 tells us, being confident in this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will not maybe. He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. May God help us this evening to die to self, to be rooted, to sprout, to mature, and to bring forth good bountiful fruit. This evening, the call is simple. Do you desire to die to self so that Christ can live out his life within you? If your answer is yes, why not type seed in the chat? Type seed in the chat. Do you desire to be rooted and grounded in Christ? If your answer is yes, type rooted in the chat. Yes, type rooted in the chat. Do you desire to bear fruit, to bear good fruit, to bear abundant fruit regardless of where you are planted? If this is your desire, type fruit in the chat. Yes, type fruit in the chat. And once you have typed all of that, once you have typed seed, rooted, and fruit, I know that my God has already seen and he's already doing his thing to ensure that you bring forth abundant fruit. All you need to do is to yield and die to self. Wherever you are, why not say this simple prayer with me this evening? Wherever you are, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, thank you for the seed of righteousness that you have planted in my heart. Help me to die to self so that you can live out your life within me. Help me to be rooted, help me to be grounded in you so that no matter what happens around me, I shall not be moved. Help me to bear bountiful fruit regardless of my environment by keeping connected with you daily. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that simple prayer, my friends, I know that God will answer. And I trust that you will believe in that prayer. You will believe God to answer that prayer. And the next time you see me, you will tell me how good God has been to you and how much fruit you have been bearing since this message. God bless you. Stay rooted and grounded in him. Thank you.